The AMRC is a repository for original source materials that reflect the history of music in the United States. Actually hundreds of thousands, if we count the pages, of rare and often unique music materials. The AMRC is one of the jewels in the crown of the, the College of Music, just as the College of Music is one of the jewels in the crown of the university. It was the brainchild of a wonderful woman by the name of Sister Mary Dominic Ray. She uh, officially established the American Music Research Center at Dominican College at the end of 1967. In 1989, we acquired this uh, just astonishing variety of materials. In fact, we have over 60 collections that go for all the way from the 17th century up to the present. I have found a space in the Norland Library within which to house it. It is going to be a celebratory space as well as a functional archival space. Why is it important that we study American music? Because we're Americans. It's our music. We have a huge amount of late 19th and early 20th century, what we might nowadays think of as barbershop kind of music. One of our most uh, used collections has been our silent film collection, and this has been uh, utilized by the, our local Mount Alto uh, Ragtime Tango and Motion Picture Orchestra. We have a whole collection that was made by um, Ben Gray Lumpkin, and Ben would spend his summers traveling around Colorado collecting folk songs. We have all of that digitized, available to be, uh, to be enjoyed and to be listened to and to be studied. Glenn Miller is probably one of the most iconic American popular musicians. He attended CU. Alan Cass really was the driving force behind assuring that Glenn Miller had a place in the AMRC. We ended up uh, with a marvelous collection from the family. We have the very first gold record ever given to a recording artist. We have two of his trombones. We have uh, a lot of uh, uh, people who are in their senior years who come here now who want to listen to the music again, listen to a lot of these radio shows that have never been heard since they were broadcast, say, in 1941 and 42. And the Berg Collection, which we have now, of the broadcasting of the big bands. It's Harry James and his music makers! I'm just blown away by the amount of information we're getting from that. Ah, uh, the Perry Como collection. Catch a falling star and put it in your pocket, never let it fade away. Beyond all of the paper, all of the manuscripts, we have several different recorded collections. And there are spools, like um, player piano wheels, there are uh, wires, there are tapes, there are CDs, there are DVDs. Anytime you record music from the past, it's valuable. It's valuable for performance practice from the early 20th century, for what our perceptions about popular music are, what our perceptions about previous generations are, how that music was used in the home or on the stage. American music is bound to the, the story of recorded music. This is one of the fun things that we have in the collection, an Edison wax cylinder player. This is the first way in which recorded sound reached the ears of listeners in, in the United States. It's entirely acoustic. It's operated entirely by this hand crank here. The needle picks up the sounds that are on the, the groove of the cylinder, which is directly attached to the needle, and then it's connected to a horn. We are a collaborative effort between the libraries and the College of Music. And so what we're talking about here is a magnet for scholarship. Through um, the years, it became the place where I found an immense amount about sheet music in general. When I initially began looking for a dissertation topic, at that time there was this um, cabinet in the AMRC that had these just volumes of various types of music and no one had ever done anything with them. And so I began doing research on those volumes of music and it turned into a bit of a lifelong project. The AMRC publishes an annual journal. I've said for years our middle name is eclectic. We are not just appealing to scholars, but to anyone who might have an interest in the various subjects. Well, there are several ways in which you can learn more about the AMRC. We have a regular newsletter. A lot of the material is available online. I think the first pass through any collection is simply to, to go to the AMRC website. We get requests 
two or three times a week from all over the world, literally. So the AMRC is, is very well known throughout the world. Now, I come from a performance background, so I'm drawn to the presentations that the center has sponsored. We have had international presenters here. Often we have gone for three or four days and had a wonderful array of concerts, seminars, individual lectures. The themes are quite diverse. I really don't see any time in the near future that we will have exhausted <laughs> the possibilities. And I've been coming to those 4th of July concerts for some time and singing my heart out and harmonizing with somebody who's sitting next to me and it just feels wonderful. These events attract people who say, wow, we didn't know there was an AMRC. Either by way of the web or physically, we want you to visit the center. I think a great way to get involved in the AMRC is to walk in and say, what do you need help with? We use volunteers to help us process a lot of the material. That's how we get an archive. That's how we create a body of information. And of course, if you have the means to do so, we would love it if you would be a contributor to the AMRC. They need to come and share and see that that stays in the public domain. And that's what I think this is all about. What kind of importance does it have in the world as a whole? Music, like all art, changes and reflects the community of today. But it has its roots someplace else. This is not just music history that we're dealing with here. This is American history. Music is the way that we connect to the emotions of the past. Unpacking what is behind the material that's held within the Research Center, I think is as significant as looking at the notes on the page and hearing the sound. Preservation equals access, and access equals preservation. One of the ways that we preserve the materials is by drawing attention to them. In the end, what good is the stuff if no one ever gets to see it? There was a time when we were really concerned that this music would continue. But what I'm not so concerned anymore because the immediacy of being able to listen to this music, no matter where you are in the world, it's available. The donors to the AMRC collection give their collections to us because they want those collections to be a part of a center that's associated with excellence. It allows one to reimagine how exciting the presentation of music in all of its dimensions has been and continues to be. And I think that's the value, one might say, that archives provide. And I think that we provide especially well for American music.